We are back. Hello. This is Aisha, one half of this podcast. This is Lexi, the other half of this podcast. And welcome back to Sisters Reading Romance. Welcome, welcome. This is the first book of January. First book of 2023. Which is kind of crazy. Your face is like, uh. <laughs> um, so this this month, we decided to pick four books that were like our top rated books. So these are like five star ratings for us. I picked two and Lexi picked two. And then we'll alternate weeks. So this week we did Book Lovers, which was my pick um, by Emily Henry. And I mean, like it was rated like, wasn't it? Didn't it win Best Romance on Goodreads? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it won. But like Emily Henry... Er- like all her books won the Goodreads book of the year. So. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, this is actually the first Emily Henry book I read before. And then I went back and read her other books after I read this one. I read Beach Read first. Because didn't I borrow yours? Yeah, because I purchased Beach Read and people we meet on vacation. Yeah, I liked Beach Read, but I wasn't uh, the biggest fan of people we meet quite enjoyed people we meet on vacation i mean i think between the two i go back to beach read more but i quite enjoy how you didn't buy book lovers because at the time it was expensive and i also hadded read it when i re- oh purchased, purchased the, the other ones? two so i wasn't because sure. i read this book but i don't know if from i would the library I i'm gonna purchase it really i read it from the library and then i purchased it like I purchased it halfway through being like, I know I'm going to love this book and I'm going to want to like own my own copy. And I finished the book reading my own copy. So um, dogs everywhere. Yeah. There are dogs everywhere that want to be involved in the podcast. Um, they're all your no. dogs too. They I know they're needy. needy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Although your dogs over there drinking water super loudly. He's a loud drinker. Um, okay, back to the book. So we read book Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This is a five star for me. I don't know. What did you end up rating? I think it? I ended up rating it like a four star. Really? I I didn't love, love it. I'm curious to see if I rate all of your books five stars. Uh, I really doubt you're going to rate the second one five stars you don't think i will i think you're gonna read it and you're gonna be like lexi what the fuck <laughs> okay that's you also technically okay. picked it because i gave you options i and... did you did but we okay anyway so book first book of the best of 2022 is my pick it's book lovers by emily henry um tropes the only one that i could think of was enemies to lovers it's kind of small town is it though but the whole city the people. whole purpose of this stupid this the stupid trip is for her to have a small town romance yeah i mean i guess and so. he technically is from that small town he he is yes and he technically runs the, the local bookshop i mean on a technicality yes. on a technicality because his family doesn't want to do it so i mean what other tropes are there in this book though I think that's that's it. Look, there's it. it's really not tropey. It's not tropey. Would you consider this a chiclet? Because re- I would, yeah, I kind of re- reading this. It. it reminded me because a little bit of the the romance with Charlie kind of took a back seat to her relationship with her sister. With her sister, yeah. Which is why I I didn't love it as much as I I enjoyed Beach Read. But then again, like, uh, wait for it. Okay, okay. By but Maria Mariana but, Zapata is also like a chiclet, but that book like wrecks you. Yeah, but I found like I didn't like I didn't like where her relationship with her sister went and I did not at the end of it I was not a fan of her sister. I was I didn't care for her. I mean, I didn't dislike um what is her name? I don't remember. You literally reread this book like yesterday. Mm, it's a couple days ago. Uh, Libby. Her name is Libby. Um. Yeah, I de- it's definitely 
It definitely is a chiclet, though. I think it's a bit more of a chiclet. Whereas, I did like, the thing is, thing is, is I did like the relationship with Charlie. I really liked Charlie. I did really like Charlie. I liked Charlie better than I liked... Gus. No, I like Gus. I um, Alex. Alex. I like Charlie better than I liked Alex. Although, but you get more. You of get Alex and yeah, because like together. I, I want to say that like people we meet on vacation is like like one hundred percent like her romanciest book. Yes, agreed. Because like Beach Read is still like kind of like ventures into the chiclet with her like grief Stuff with her, her dad. dad. Where people we meet on vacation is like 100% like everything is about their yeah. relationship. Yeah. And like this one is also like venturing into Chiclet. But I like Charlie when you got Charlie and when you actually got they the did, relationship development. They did spend a decent amount of time together. I would say they not. They spent a dis- decent amount of time. But like they didn't. It was like s- told not shown. Because it was like, oh, well, we were editing yeah. this book and we would sit like side by side editing this book, sending it back and forth. And then you would spend so much time with her sister and interactions with her sister. Yeah. Or like talking, her talking about her sister. I mean, that's true. So, I mean, like, yeah, I, I would I would still consider this chick lit. I it's hate bit, yeah. I hate the fucking term chick lit. I hate it. Too, or women's but... lit. But this is like it fits the definition of that. Um. I, mean, I would say from a trigger warning standpoint, this is similar to like uh, Love Light Farms where like you still get this like um, like loss of a parent. Like they talk about that a lot. Like the trauma of the loss of their parent, their mom. Yeah, in particular for Nora. Yeah. And so like also, I would say that's probably Charlie talks warning. about his like dad's was a heart attack stroke his dad's stroke yeah so charlie talks about that um i did almost get the sense that charlie had a learning disability at the beginning when he talked about how he like wasn't good at school and he like couldn't fit yeah he probably like or some sort of like i don't know he probably wasn't really explained but that was kind of a sense that i got being but like the thing is it's like maybe he just didn't learn the way other kids learn other kids learned yeah like maybe. people are different learners like i didn't learn very well in school and i would say i'm a relatively in- intelligent human being relatively <laughs> there are some moments that obviously i'm not but i mean this book also had really high ratings people like eat really really high Emily rating. Henry. they eat that shit up they are entire like i was she has a shocked. huge following like She's like Sarah J. Mass level following, I think, at this point. But she's only got three books. No, she's like four. What's she, the other? What's the? I think she released book? one before Beach Read, but Beach Read was the one that picked up. Mm-hmm. And then the like these ones are the ones that people think live like obviously they live they, in the same world. They live in the same world because they all like because like weirdly Charlie, connect. Charlie used like was um, January's editor, editor for the Macaroni Family yeah. from Beach Read. And then uh, you don't get the connection, really, between Alex. What's the girl's name in? People we meet on vacation. I don't even remember. You don't get the connection it's between at them. the front of my brain. But, but then in the, in the bonus chapter that she does. Oh, they Poppy. All... Her name's Poppy. Is it? I think it's Poppy. Um, grab the book. But um, you get... You get the bonus chapter from Gus and January, and they all are at the airport at the same time. And you know that... Yeah, it's Poppy. Alex and Poppy. Okay. And you know that January and Gus know Nora and Charlie because they're authors and these two are editors. Like, there's an entire universe that people are like, all these people are friends. Like, these are... This is the the golden trio and like because poppy goes back to writing um a blog a blog but doesn't alex want to write a book he yeah he wants to write a he's he's writing a book i think interesting because i think he took a little bit of time off but he like 
I went to like go I be a university that. teacher. Be a teacher, yeah. And I think he took a little bit of time off to write his book. Hmm. They they Unless definitely I'm all live absolutely in the same world, confusing sure. two books together. I think no, I I don't I don't quite remember. The funny thing but is, I, I have this book right here, and like I, could, uh, yeah. I could just skim it. To see. Okay, the Goodread rating on this was a four point two four, which I would say it's accurate. I think that's a little high. That's just because I. The thing is, though, is that this had almost five hundred thousand ratings. Yeah. So like, like I said, everyone like everyone loves em- emily henry because i would say that some books you're like okay this is rated kind of high but they've got like not that many ratings this has so many ratings that like that's got to be accurate like majority of the people rate this a four or five yeah most people like ge- like i genuinely enjoyed my time it's just not my favorite this is my favorite emily henry it's definitely a summer read. Like, I definitely read this in the middle of the summer. Yeah, it is definitely a summer read. I would say, like, an August kind of read, which is when it takes place, is, mm-hmm. like, mostly in August. Like, the whole month of August, basically. Um, Yeah, this, this is super high ratings. And, like, so many of them, which I was shocked. But then I guess it did win Goodreads, like, Romance of 2022. So, I guess that kind of makes Which I'm not sense. shocked. No. Although, like, it had some good contenders in that, like, fight. Yeah, I had what a did lot you, of... You, you didn't vote for good reads. You didn't write for... Yeah, you yeah, didn't. Yeah, I did. You, did you vote for book lovers, though? I don't think I voted for book lovers. I voted Wait, for book, let me book grab lovers. My, let me grab my freaking phone if your dog would get off me. Um, Let me see. Does it tell you, if you what you voted for? I don't know. If you go on the app? I have no idea. Uh, the only thing is, is I did wish you got Charlie. You only get single POV in all of Emory, Emily Henry's books. And I do wish that you got Charlie. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to read the back of the book. So, one summer, two rivals, a plot twist they didn't see coming. Nora Steffen's life is books. She reads them. She reads them all. She is not the type of hair and she is not that type of heroin. Heroin good i am struggling great great job not the plunky one not the laid-back dream girl and especially not the sweetheart in fact the only people nora is a heroine for are her clients for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent and her beloved little sister libby which is why she agrees to go to sunshine falls north carolina for the month of august when libby begs her for a sister's trip away with visions of small town transformation for nora who she's convinced needs to become the heroine of her own story. But instead of picnics in meadows and run it or run-ins with the, a handsome country doctor or bulging four-armed bartender, <laughs> Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor from back in the city. Brooding. Huh? It's brooding. Yeah, that's what I said. You said brooding. Okay. Brooding editor from back in the city it would be a meet cute if not for the fact that they met many times and it's never been cute if nora knows she's not the idea nor yeah if nora knows she's not an idea ideal heroine charlie knows he's nobody's hero but as soon as they're thrown together again and again in a series of coincidences no editor worth their salt would allow what they could discover might just unravel the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves I do think that's accurate, although I did struggle reading through that, so you I'm did. sorry. Please, please go look it up and read it yourself. <laughs> I struggled to. I don't know why I struggled to reading that. Um, I do think that's pretty accurate. That back of the book gives you just enough, but not too much. Yeah, but it still sells you like this is a romance. It does, and although this is a romance. I guess this is. I more felt like romance. you spent like seventy percent of this book with her relationship with her sister, and then. The other 30% with Charlie. I would definitely go 50-50 at no. least. 50-50. I with, would not. 50 with I would Libby. not say that. Because the conflict, there's like, I would say like the conflict, if there is any conflict between Charlie and Nora. like that he's moving back to the small town and she's not. Yeah, but the conflict in the book is with her sister. Like, yeah, it's her sister not like moving basically to the same spot and not fucking telling her (laughs) yeah that was a weird one we'll we'll get there we'll get there 
But um, this movie just wasn't a fan. Yeah, Nora and Charlie. Although, so Charlie's like thirty six. Yeah, I think they're. And then Nora's thirty two. She's definitely thirty two because I wrote it down. But yeah. Charlie. I want to say is a Charlie's couple years like, older yeah, than he is. Yeah, I think Charlie's is. a couple years older, but they're definitely in their 30s. They're definitely in their 30s. Um, and Libby's in her, like, late 20s? Yeah. Because Nora would have been... Nora's, like, four years older? I thought she was five, like, because at least five years Libby older. Libby was 16 when their mom died. And... Nora was 23? I, was I don't know. I don't remember. I think Um, she was in her, like, early 20s. Like, I don't think she went, she was in school still. No, she was about to go to university. So then she must have been 18, 19. So they must not be that far apart. Libby must be, like, Which is weird because, like, like 23. Libby literally, like, she kind of doesn't do anything for herself ever. I also was thinking about this because, so, they live in a, like, two-bedroom, I think. Mm-hmm. But Libby doesn't work, and they've got two kids. I know. So what Libby does doesn't her work. Husband do? Her husband's an accountant. He must be. And like a. Pretty... But the thing is, no, 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 no. This is why I'm not a fan of her sister. Is because Nora's basically supporting her sister. Like her husband lost his job once, once, and they like they don't make a lot of money. I, and because yeah, I was kind of like by that, like. The, that's the reason they're moving to the small town is is because obviously it's cheaper. The, like, the price of living is cheaper. Yes, naturally. And he got a job. In the of North Carolina. He got a job in a, like a town over. Yeah, like a 20 minute drive or something. And like the, the, the I don't think her sister understands how much her like Nora does for her and I don't think she ever wanted to understand because Nora would just do it like naturally which is why I'm not a huge fan like the fact that her sister never asked like oh why didn't you ever go into book editing even though she knew I, no but I don't think that, she knew I think she knew no, like she said that in the book that she's like well I didn't know that you even applied for a job and didn't take it and she's like I just didn't tell you she's like well why didn't you tell me she's like I don't know I just didn't I didn't tell you because you wanted to afford all this shit because you don't fucking work and you have three kids. They have three kids. Well, two if you, and a half. Two and a half because she's pregos. But, but yeah, I like was... it's just like it's kind of this like I like she has no concept of like how much shit is because if you if if they really were that tight on money. Yeah. And they, they were just move out of the city. Not only would, they, what they, not were only doing, would but... they not just like move out of the city. They would not have keep having kids like they have one kid and then call it done because they'd be like well kids are really fucking expensive maybe i won't have another kid and now they can't even fucking wrap it up like jesus christ yeah i mean they obviously want another kid but yeah i was i was kind of confused because i was like okay they're living in new york city yeah i was i mean to be fair i don't know what the prices are like in new york city but they're very expensive my general yeah consensus is that is they're more expensive than pretty expensive So they're living in a two bedroom with two children and Libby doesn't work. And I was like, he must make a lot of money. It's either he must make a lot of money or Nora is like somehow supporting them, somehow supporting them. Because, yeah, I was kind of confused at how that worked because it did make sense for them to move out of the city. It made sense. And I was surprised it was just like Nora it was, didn't come to that conclusion. It, it like it made sense when you put it out there. But it also like all her sister and her husband's decisions made absolutely no sense to me. Just as someone yeah. who who does her own finances, who understands how expensive it is to, to live, live in a in city. A city <laughs> It just like she must live in like weird. a fucking la la land. She was a little weird. Like it was like and I then, yeah. Yeah. And this entire plot is pushed by her sister. Like her sister wanted her to take this trip. Yeah. Not because she was going to move to this small town, which she failed to mention to her sister. Yeah, she wanted she she sold it to Nora as like her favorite book is Once in a Lifetime, which is a book that uh Nora represents the author. So she sold the book basically to yeah, a she's publisher a, she's a, and that's why it got, it got really big she's and like, a, they were creating a like movie a book agent. and she so her sister loved the book and was like let's go f- like meet the small town and then you could finally get your small town romance because the one thing i did really like about this book is the fact that 
this is the anti Hallmark movie. And I felt like it was fitting to do this in January because obviously Hallmark movies are classically Christmas movies. And this is literally, this is about the anti Hallmark movie. And they, they, she even talks about it. Like she's like, I've been dumped like four times, all of which are about from guys, big, powerful city guys going to the country for work Falling in love oh, with yeah, yeah, random, yeah. I forgot about that. Like bakers or and yeah, they like, like they have their own Hallmark my movie. My favorite romance. thing is when the beginning of the book starts with Nora getting dumped over the phone by a guy who's fallen in love with the the heiress of a like small, small inn. inn in the middle of fucking butt fuck nowhere, Texas, and she's like, "Are you fucked?" Like, like she literally broke it down. She's like, "So you went to the small town." To buy this hotel. Yeah. And Instead, you fell you're in quitting love. your job and you're actually going to help them run the hotel to make money. Also, the only reason you had a job was because your dad is a hotel mongol and you got the job via nepotism. <laughs> and he's like, not everything's about like making money, Nora. And he, she's like, you literally got the job. You're only rich because of I nepotism. really I I the thing is <laughs> like, like the you thing work is, for it. It's like I really liked Nora and I really I liked Charlie. I did. I really liked Nora. But if you took the like the only frustrations I had with this book was, was her sister. Yeah. And it like, did revolve a lot around Libby. But I mean that's why I think I liked the book. Like I think I liked that part. But of the, the thing book. is I did wish I got more Nora and Charlie. Like I wish in the small town when they went to what was it called? What was it the town called? Are you sure you Sunshine know? Falls. That's what it was called. And I did wish that you got more of them together. Because their banter was good. And it was It was good funny. banter. It, it was, was funny. Like, a, like a laugh out loud funny banter too. Which is like part of the selling point of this book. Because I was like, it's like genuinely funny. Mm-hmm. But then you do get a lot of Libby. And I, I found that the problem between her and Libby went on a little too long. It went like, I would have liked like it to, to the sooner. point that like the third act conflict was more of a problem with her and Libby than it was with her and Charlie because like because it, the problem yeah. with her and Charlie was like oh the month is done she has to go home and to- he didn't want to tell her that he's actually going to stay yeah and they're both city people. And like also, don't want to live in a small town. Libby didn't want to tell her that she was going to move to the fucking town. Yeah, that was the one thing that I didn't like was that, yeah, she waited so long. And the husband kept being like, do you know? Like she, she literally <laughs> thought that her sister was going through a divorce. Yes. And so she was like, I got to support. I got to support my sister. She's pregnant. I'm going to do whatever I can to support her. But really, it was like they're keeping a secret from Nora and they're acting very like awkward around her. Because her sister was basically avoiding her husband because her husband was like, you need to tell your sister we're fucking moving. And she's like, I'll get to it. (laughs) And like she was feeling guilty. about Because the thing is, it's like, like, at least our relationship is different, but. If I decided to move to the middle of nowhere, you would probably be with me, like, going up to see the, my fucking house. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was a little... It was a little, like... It, I mean, I I think it was a good problem. Like, this it was a problem, good problem made sense. It wasn't a stupid problem. Like, like, it wasn't a conflict, stupid problem, stupid. but I just felt that, like, her sister had... I, like, I, I felt like her sister didn't understand Nora fully. Yes. And I also didn't think her, prob- her like, sister, like, I just, like, like cared about Nora's opinion, really. I mean, I think, too, that, like, like, th- so that aside... Like, the reason I liked this book, though, was because, like, I did like the relationship between her and Libby. Like, I did like it. I think that it, it the the conflict between them drew out too long that it kind of overshadowed the problem between her and Charlie and the fact that he was having yeah, to stay I to felt care like of his parents. Yeah, I felt like the entire first half of the book should have been about her and Libby. And, and then, then it the, should have switched. It should have switched. And it should have been, like, the last two weeks 
in Sunshine Falls should have been about her and Charlie. Like, yeah. I did think it went a little long because they waited for the last, like, five days, basically. Yeah. But I did – what I did like about this book was it was about a woman who makes her own money, takes care of her fucking self. Yeah. Knew exactly what I she think- wanted and why she didn't want something. And then when she – could have moved to a small town for her sister and for a guy that she loved and realized that she's like, I would not be happy here. Like, I can't do this. Like, I can't yeah, move here. I think and then picked herself. The the thing I like about Nora is, like, she's a character that's always... Consistent. Def- she's com- consistent <clears throat> the whole time. She's always a char- type of character that you, like, Eight. in in books, she's always the villain. Yes. Because she's, like, the the money-hungry, like, career and woman. Hero. Yeah. Well, no, she's like, she's always like that, the like other woman. She's the one that evens out. She makes the regular heroine seem more down to earth and sweet in contrast to. And like, yeah, to like the like career woman, like the power woman who cares about her career, doesn't want kids, like cares about money. It's, I really like the fact that you got to see a character like that because so different it's yeah it's very different from like the i'm not like other girls the classic kind of girl yeah the classic like because one. in a traditional romance you'd probably get li- like someone like libby yes with like the pink hair which i also didn't understand because she's pregnant she shouldn't have been dyeing her hair in particular box dye from the I mean, I don't know the rules there. I'm so. pretty sure you're not supposed to have like. Neither of us have had kids, so I feel like neither we, of us has kids. Neither know. of us have That's, dyed or bleached our hair. I mean, yeah, but I don't I'm know pretty that, sure but... you're not supposed to put box dye on your head when you're pregnant. I have no idea, so I can't. I can't comment. I have literally no idea. I mean, yeah, I did because I because realistically, the reason I like Nora is because, and the reason I like this book is because. She is, in every situation, the anti-hero getting a love story. Yeah. Where she, like, still is consistent throughout the whole book. She still knows that she wants to be a city person. She still wants to make money. She loves her she, Peloton, and She I doesn't want that. kids. Like, and, and she doesn't She doesn't change her mind and be like, suddenly, like, you know what? Yeah, I do want kids. Yeah. Like, well, they both also, are like, we don't want kids. And they're like, cool, we don't want kids. <laughs> like, it's Yeah, I, I think that, like... It's nice. It's refreshing. I like, I like how Charlie does like like that that part of her. Yeah, he's like, I also don't want kids, and she's like, perfect. Like it and doesn't he's like become... I like that you love your Peloton, and she's like, I love my Peloton. <laughs> I love how the the best part of their banter is when he's like, he like says like you look expensive like a joke, and she's like, I look expensive. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> and he's like, that was supposed to be an insult but okay <laughs> like i their banter was so good and that is one thing that emily henry does really well is the banter between her heroine and he- hero are super good so like she does I, dialogue very well she does she great dialogue like this is a good book for the dialogue i mean i also think that what emily henry does really well is she gives you enough detail for you to place this book in time but not too much as to date the book. Do you know what I mean? Like the one thing about Love Light Farms is that the whole book is about this Instagrammer coming to the farm. Mm -hmm. Those kind of things don't last forever. So like straight out saying Instagram could date the book. Whereas she mentions like at the very end of the book, like Nora picks up a Bridgerton book and is like reading the back of the book. So you can then now date this book in time. But not enough to actually. But that's yeah, it's like vague because it's vague enough. But to she not also date the book she just, ten years from now. She also mentions Peloton and that's true. So it does it's like a brand does, bike, which is why that's the only thing about using specific brands is you date the book because like but that like, is true. The, the I, Peloton I do, thing is the only one. But I do find that in general, besides that. She does a good job placing this book in time without overdoing it to like then date the book. Mm-hmm. Like I did have a good time. I just think if you just spent less time with her sister, I also think the sex scene should have happened so much sooner. 
It was so like I thought they were gonna have sex in the library. I was like, this is it's happening. And then they stop and then they don't have sex for like another week. And I was like, why? Just do it. And then when they're finally having sex, he's like, why the fuck did we wait? Like, we should have been doing this the whole time. Yeah. But it, like, it was, like, this kind of how this is supposed to be a slow burn. I know. romance thing happens. It's supposed to be a slow burn, Aisha. I know. But still, I just wish that, like. Also, this is, like, a back burn burner because the whole, the whole sister relationship was on the front burner, Aisha. I I don't know why you're still hung up on I just I, I just, don't know. Like it just got to the point that I was just so frustrated with her sister sometimes that I was like I can't I can't read right now. I can't read this book right now. I had to put really? it down. I it never bothered like, me that much. No, I literally had to keep like putting this book down cuz her like it just like it would keep going with her sister and I was like I'm just like get to the romance. Just just get there ready. Like, I mean, it obviously, like, I would have preferred more of Charlie and Nora, but I don't think it ever bothered me that much. It bothered me. Because, I mean, like, I also, yeah, I mean, I did like the ending, though, because it did make sense. Like, that did make sense. It also didn't end with babies and a marriage, which I was, like, also kind of refreshing. Like, I think they were going to get married, but, like, they both consistently were still like, yeah, we still don't want kids. Mm-hmm. And usually at the end of the book, it's like, I don't know if I want kids. And then it's like, oh, we're going to have kids. Like, I've changed my mind because he's perfect. Yeah. Like, when have we, have you ever read a heroine and like a hero where they actually don't want kids? And then they act like they, they just don't actually have kids. I don't think I have. No. Or like they say something like when I was reading Icebreaker she wanted to adopt because she was adopted and then at the end she she's like pregnant with like accidental pregnancy and i'm like she, she wanted to adopt yeah just, yeah we're it like still kind of yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean that's what i mean like this book is so that's why it's so good and the condom watch like basically what happens is they they like start to have sex and then in a library no, this is when they're actually in his office, like when they're actually about to have sex. And then he's like, um, he's like, she's like, oh, condoms. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's right. He's like, well, are you in birth control? She's like, yeah, but he's like, right, right, we don't want kids. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, we're, we're, and he just like goes and gets one. Like, it's just not even part of the question. It's like, we're not those people. Like, that's exactly what it's like. Like, they're both just like, we're not the people who would leave anything a chance. Yeah. And they're just not who they are. And it's so consistent. And I was like, this is super fucking refreshing. Yeah. Because it's not like, oh, no, don't worry. I'm clean. <laughs> like It's like, awesome. Okay. How do we know? I mean, I didn't think you'd like. I like the book. I just wanted more. It doesn't sound like, like you did. You know what I like, like the most is I highly recommend to anyone who's read at least all of the three recent Emily Henry books to go on her website and read the bonus chapter in the airport. That one was cute. Because it has all of them. So it's from, is it from January's perspective? It, yeah, it's, it's from, from January's it, perspective. No, it's from Gus's perspective. No, I think it's from January. No, I think because... it's from Gus because he gets told that they're going to have a kid and yeah. he's like, you're going to have a kid? She's like, no, yeah, yeah, but also you. <laughs> like... It's, I'm pretty sure it's from Gus's perspective. But it's like them in an airport and you see all the couples. It's cute. So it's like Gus and January are it, like coming to the airport. They're going through the airport. And then you yeah. see like Alex and Poppy doing karaoke. And then you see like Nora and Charlie. And they were like, oh, let's go say hi because I know Charlie. And then they start making out in the middle of the airport. And they were like, never mind. We'll, we'll we're go. not going to do that. We'll yeah, it's cute. It's a cute little like where you get a little bit of everybody. Because I wanted more of like that. I wanted more of that type of like Charlie and Nora together, like making out in the middle of a fucking airport. Like that's what I wanted. Yeah, they're fucking cute. They're cute. I I really like Charlie. I did too because the the banter is just so fucking good in this book. Like honestly, like sometimes the like conversation between like two characters is just like subpar this is like excellent and the thing is it's like also because you know you always get those heroes that are like 
like mean because they're just they're kind of just assholes we're like you never i don't we're know like charlie is like the reason so when they first met not only did nora just get broken up with but charlie was just told that his dad had a stroke his dad had a stroke and he was to fly back to to see his dad to see his dad and he was gonna miss his flight because nora was late because Nora was on the phone getting broken up with. And they didn't tell. Obviously, they didn't tell each other because they, they this just is met. the first meeting. So their first meeting didn't go down very well because she was like obviously mad that she just got broken up with. And her ex-boyfriend just moved to a small town to go fall in love with some heiress. To a small, small town heiress. In. Yeah. <laughs> like a bed and breakfast. And then Charlie was mad because like and he was like. Checking he was just like watch and he was, he was like, generally like frustrated with yeah. life because he also didn't find out until like a couple days later like they didn't and tell him right away also it was is kind of like i think the same thing was happening with charlie as it was with nora with like his family just not telling him things yes like his family just didn't tell him that the bookstore was not financially doing well, doing well until he showed up and he was like what the fuck is happening and, and they're like, like mm, doesn't make any money yeah and then his, his mom just didn't like doing like scheduling he didn't like she didn't like doing the books works but like it was like but then she also didn't want to sell because it's been in the family for so long and he's like but you're literally bleeding money yeah and he's like i don't understand why you didn't just hire someone to help (laughs) yeah he's like a very practical person i yeah i really did like charlie and yeah their banter was so good um yeah this book was just so good it's so refreshing i think that like read this book if you're like don't get me wrong i love hallmark movies i eat that shit up but this was super refreshing to read yeah it was, it was a fun read but i liked beach read a little bit better i definitely liked this book i cried I, when i read this the first time <laughs> I i'm gonna say you did it i don't remember if i cried i, I definitely did i don't remember i what cried in I beach read and people we made on vacation. I don't think I cried in people we made on vacation. I think I might have got a little choked up during beach read. When, but when she was reading all those letters? Yeah. But know, that's... I was bawling my fucking eyes out then. <laughs> we, yeah. We have very, they're like very different tastes in books, but like, like, it's weirdly different, but the same. <laughs> um, I mean... I I overall this was a, I this was a five like I obviously rated this a I five think like a four solid four I mean would I reread this hundred percent I've read this this is the third time I've read this book. yeah you should just know how to like she finds a book she likes and, and she'll I just, just read, read the it. same book it's like with like you know when you listen you find that one song you like and you just reread it and reread it and re or re listen to it until That's you're me. so sick of it. That's the issue with books. I do that with songs too, but yeah, if I find something I like, like I could just I buy it and then I read. Like I've read the Soulmate Equation like five times <laughs> at least. Um, I mean, yeah. So my my rating's obviously five. Rereadability, obviously, in my opinion, it's rereadable. I don't know if you would reread it. I think I would reread it. I just don't think I would. Like, it's not the one that I'm going to go back to often, but I think I would reread it eventually. Mm. Steaminess? Ugh, the only thing is... I, it's like a two. Yeah. Because there are scenes, two. like, there when they went, scenes. when they went, like, skinny dipping, that yep. was that was a fun scene. And, like... In the in, library. In the library. In, at, at the door. And then also... Oh, my God. There's one thing. There was the Bigfoot. The that Bigfoot was so romance. funny. It was so... It was absolutely hilarious and i loved it, it was the like an foot ongoing... erotica it was so funny yeah that's a good scene yeah i i i would say two a two is accurate two. for steaminess um would you recommend this like obviously i would i think i would is like a good it's like for people who don't like de- want to deep dive into romance but still want a romance mm, i don't know if that's it's a good like i mean i get what you're saying entry level romance where it's not like too steamy it's not too steamy it's not, it's not too tropey it's not too that's true this isn't that this isn't super it's tropey. not too like i mean you know because there's a, there's some things that like get pulled in romance books and you're just like 
this is absolutely fucking wild. And yeah. if you like, if yeah. you try to explain this to someone who doesn't read romance, they're you're like, just like, yeah, what are you reading and why are you reading yeah, it? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because there are things like, like the things like the secret royal or like the like secret baby, like shit like that. Are people people are like, what the fuck? And you're like, yeah, that's just a thing. It's just a thing. Because that's true though. This book, and I guess maybe that like should have been a a point that we made. Like this isn't a tropey book, and like it's not tropey on purpose like this the whole book the premise of the book is to not be tropey the premise of the book is to not be like that stereotypical it, romance Hallmark because romance because nora is not the stereotypical yeah romance heroine and charlie is not the typical romance mm-hmm. hero so yeah i would say this is like literally supposed to be not tropey yeah but I still, I think I would recommend reading, like, obviously, like, the recommendations go to different people depending on what they like to read. But I think I would recommend Beach Read over. Really? Yeah. I would, no, I'd recommend Book Lovers. Oh, I mean, obviously, like, I, I, I was not even, I was, like, a third way through the book from the library. And then I just went and bought it, read my own copy. Because I knew I was going to like the book. So, I mean, yeah. I personally would recommend this i mean i would recommend it i just think i would recommend her other other two a little bit over this one so wait of the three that are in the same world you would recommend those two both over book lovers yeah really yeah i would still rec i would for sure recommend this over people with me on vacation that was my least favorite emily henry but it's the the most romancey yeah, but I don't know. And the, also it's the flashbacks. Like it, that's always a the, hard that's thing to do. the purpose of a second chance romance, Ayesha. I know. I'm yeah. And the thing is, funny thing is, one of your favorite books is Love and Other Words, which is yes. literally the premise it's the a exact same premise second. of the fucking book. <laughs> I, that's a It's I the don't literal know. it's the same premise of the book. That they were friends and then like you show them being friends and then you show their like them in current day and how they fought I mean, how they had fallen yes. out and now they're reconnecting same fucking premise of like people we meet on vacation i guess so i don't know that's i i don't know i love that book but i don't know i still still not my favorite um okay any last words Mm, I think you can just pick up any Emily Henry book and I think you have Agreed. a good time. Her, they are definitely her like dialogue sl- is so good. They are definitely like a slower digest. Like I don't think you could just plow through an Emily Henry book. Yeah. I think it's definitely one of those books that you like you read a section. These are kind of books you read on vacation. Like all of her th- all three of the yeah. books are books you read on vacation. Except for beach read does happen in the winter. I will say it's not a beach read. It is a happens in the winter read (laughs) yes it does yeah you're right but it does it's they're definitely vacation books i mean yeah i yeah i definitely think this is like a book obviously they probably get sold in airports all the fucking time yeah i would agree but this is like a book you read on the plane a book you read on the beach yeah their covers are pretty discreet and they're not like too like cartoony I hate really, really cartoony covers. They're they're pretty discreet, but like not. Too I like discreet. how they're like simple. Like most yeah. of them are quite simple. Agreed. I mean, I would obviously recommend this book no matter what. And I think you just purposely like to hate on the books that I recommend. Just honestly, <laughs> but me. you purposely like avoid books that I recommend until you read them, and you're like, oh damn, Lexi actually has really good taste in books. I mean, we'll talk about this in the next book because that was just a I don't know. I'm still kind of wrap my head around what I think about that book. But um moral of the story, Emily Henry, pick up any of her books. They're really good. This is obviously my favorite. It's obviously not Lexi's favorite of the Emily it's Henry books. It's not my books. favorite, but it's a good book. Uh five stars for me not very steamy but still very good um next week we're doing wolf song by tj clune 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 yeah and um i have thoughts i have lots of thoughts so stay tuned (laughs) stay tuned if you couldn't tell whose pick it was yeah i have i have yeah i have lots of thoughts so stay tuned and we'll be back in your ear holes next week bye